Look at this. Live from the MGM in Las Vegas. Viva La George from No Limit Boxing. Uh, what a day it's been. And look at you, just right in the middle of Sin City. Yeah, look, mate, I'm, I'm in the MGM Grand Lobby at the moment. This is this is the entry that we're getting on the way in. We've got the ring set up. We've got all of the uh, Zoo Fundora signage left, right and centre. And there's Aussie popping up left, right and centre as well too. The further we get into the week, I'm, I'm running into more and more um, Australian accents and Australian voices along the way. Is it pretty surreal to walk around and see, I guess, even obviously the Tim and Fundora and everything, but just a No Limit logo in the middle of Vegas. I mean, you've got to be happy and proud of, your, I guess, yourself and your own accomplishments as well as obviously your fighters. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been a, it's been a very, very fun journey for us to get to the point that we're at now. And, um, man, like it's, I, I do feel like it is only the beginning, but I, I just um, I know that... Um, yeah, we've put in a lot of hard work to get to where we're at and, and the fact that, that we can now be doing this for our guys and and take over the world with them is is a um is something I'm really proud of and something that we're it keeps inspiring us to work harder and, and push further. Yeah, and giving obviously fighters from Australia these opportunities as well, which is phenomenal. Now, we just saw the press conference for uh Tim Zoo, Sebastian Fandora. Uh, it looked uh, pretty tame, I would say, but I guess, look, there's, it's not going to be tame come Saturday night, Vegas, Sunday in Australia. Yeah, well, look, Pandora's a, a very different opponent than Thurman. You know, Thurman, we knew there'd be fireworks with Thurman and everything that he brought, and, and then it's a complete contrast with, with Pandora. He's a very quietly spoken accountant type, a six-foot-six six accountant. Um, so he's very, yeah, he is. He's very, very quietly spoken and... There were some some moments though in the face off, like um, Tim Tim brought up a few little little things to him during the face off. So um, you know, Sebastian Fundora has been spotted eating burgers and pizzas around the around the hotel food court. So I mean, I, I don't think they realised how many people we have here who who um you know you know who were able to to see him in his element. A lot of our guys have been hanging out in the food court too. So you're not going to get away from them there. Yeah, Tim had an issue, which I agree with as well. They put the uh, WC WBC belt in front of Sebastian Fundora, where he believes it should have been in the middle, and I think we all agree on that. Do you find that a little bit a uh, WBC Sebastian fundora -y? Hey, let him enjoy his moment with that belt. He's not going to get to see it ever again. Let him enjoy that moment. If he wants to sit it on his table, have it there. Have it there. Get your photo with it, because next time you get to see it, it'll be around Tim's waist. Mm. Well, there's some uh, Twitter stuff happening at the moment too. I saw Errol Spence, uh, I was going to say Errol Flynn. Jeez, that's a flowback. Errol Spence uh, flying into Vegas saying, I want the winner with a little shark circle. And uh, A, any sightings or B, is he is he half a chance at this? Because it's looking like Terence Crawford, should he beat Bundora? Look, I'm really excited that he said that because I think uh, like, like a lot of these guys over here, a lot of these guys are coming in with so much confidence. They still think about, the time that Gachet, um knocked him down in the first round in his first American fight. And they think that that's the team that they think of. And they're going to rock up here on, on Saturday night, Sunday time uh, locally in Australia. And they're going to see Tim live for the first time. And they're going to get a very rude shock. I mean, ask any one of the opponents that have come out and fought Tim in Australia, when they're rolling in, they're thinking that they've you know, got this little guy from down under, they're going to come through and walk through him. When they actually see what Tim can do and what Tim does do in the ring, it's a whole nother story. It's a rude shock. So I wouldn't be surprised if they roll into town um, all confident about taking Tim next and then when they see what he does, they change their mind. Do you think Errol Spence will still want the smoke after he sees uh, Fundor, uh, the tree fall? I, oh, look, I hope that he does because I really like that fight. I think um, I think Errol Spence is, is a great name for Tim to share the ring with. He's a great fighter, great fighter. He was, he's been on the pound for pound list for quite some time. Took the loss to Crawford in, in what was a very unspence like performance, I'd say. Um, so you, you can't, you can't base his talent off that one performance. Um, but he's a guy that uh, he's a, he's a superstar over here. He's a dead, dead superstar. So we would, we'd love to have him here. Vegas to be a great location for that. Or if he wants to go down to Texas and do it in a cowboy stadium, um, yeah, what an experience that will be. That's another another bucket list moment for us. And this is the thing is that Tim Zhu is just picking off his bucket list, all the things that he wants to do. He wants to fight in Vegas. He wants to fight in New York. He wants to fight in big shows here. 
uh, in the US. So um, we've just got to keep getting these wins and keep putting in the big performances. I'm a big advocate of fighters' eyes never lie. You can always sort of see what's like sitting underneath there. But with Tim, he looks excited, sure, but he also doesn't look a overwhelmed. But he just looks like laser focused, and and he belongs. He looks genuinely at home, which is a great sign. Well, a lot of these guys have him sat as a headliner um, over here. Like obviously, the pool's a lot deeper over here, and 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 so they haven't all had the opportunity to be the headline act and. And and take the you know the like Fundora he he's been a great fighter in the division but he's never had to carry a pay per view. Tim zoo has been doing that for years in Australia where there's probably more pressure on him fighting in Australia, bringing these international opponents in and having to live up to the name that he's built in Australia. It's so much pressure on him there. Whereas you come over here, that's all. It's just him living out a dream. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing it. Any uh, other little. Celeb boxing sightings you've seen? Who have you? Who's been popping up left, right, and center over there? Because um, I'm hearing there's yeah. a few good names. Mate, they they are. They're popping up everywhere at the moment. We bumped into Miguel Cotto this morning. It was it was very exciting to see him. Tim even yeah. Tim even shared his little um his excitement in that. Look, I'm I'm even excited about the the current guys. Rolly yeah. Romero, Pitbull Cruz. These guys, you know, so much energy. Um. Really good fighters too. I think that's going to be a great fight. So anyone tuning in, look, make sure that you watch them them earlier fights. I mean, Michael Zarafa's on the card. He's got a very tough fight. But also, I, I think the best opportunity for him to win a world title. So um, it's there for the taking. We could end up with 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 some Aussies with, with belts wrapped around their waist flying home. Zarafa wins that world title. Is he going home with a No Limit t-shirt on or uh, what's the go there? <laughs> Look, I, I really do. I really do hope that he wins the title. I really do. I know that. Um, other than, other than obviously hoping to see him and Tim fight one day, I'd also love to see the other great fights that we have in Australia. We've got some really good middleweights in Australia. You know, we've got the likes of Zarafa, Tapia. Um, there's so many good uh, uh, Hardman as well. So many good fighters here in Australia that could that could work their way up to be a, a nice little domestic defence for him. Yeah, that would be really, really good too. So, well, I'm going to let you get back to Sin City. Uh, if I missed one thing over this weekend from not being there, it's probably going to Little John with you. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's if you, if you miss out on one thing and uh, and your mate that just popped in there as well, both of you guys, but Little John with George Rose would have been red eye. Look at that. <laughs> uh, look, we'll, we'll make the most of it for you. And we'll, um, I can't say that we'll keep any photos for you. Everything is getting wiped. What's, what happens here stays here. But you'll have to come for the next one. You'll have to come for the next one. Oh, oh, I'm there. I'll be in the middle with that tiger right behind you. Don't you worry. Uh, when no <laughs> one's looking after 10 schooners at the MGM. Right. Oh, I'll have 10 for you tonight. <laughs> Cheers. Stuff. George Rose, yeah. live from the MGM Grand in Vegas. Appreciate your time with the Punch podcast. Go, Tim Zoo. Go, Liam Wilson and uh, Zoo SA. Boom. Zoo SA. Let's do it. Let's do it.